Hi, friends. The Fetish Eyes Longwear Liquid Eyeshadows have arrived. I ordered these last Friday when the Love Collection dropped, and this was the only thing I purchased from that release. I wanted to originally just get three shades, but when I saw all of them, I try to be reasonable, fam. Please forgive me. This was an indulging purchase, but I didn't buy anything else. I just wanted to try the liquid eyeshadows, although I did have my eye on the All Matte 6 Pan Palette, which it was Pat's first All Matte 6 Pan Pan palette and I was intrigued. Those shades, the muted mauves and roses, soft browns, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Again, I almost bought one, but I feel like I'm going to wait until they go on sale from the looks of it. None of them are out of stock, nor are any of the liquid eyeshadows. So with that said, the Fetish Eyes Longwear Liquid Eyeshadows retail for $29 each. Liquid Shimmer Shadow, Creamy Texture, Ultra Blendable, Crease Proof, Smudge Resistant, 10 Hour Plus Wear. This is the box they come in, which has the Love Collection design on there. And where are these made? Oh! in Italy. But unfortunately, they only have a six month suggested shelf life. Now with liquid products such as these, I would just monitor the consistency, the smell, the texture. You don't want to apply something crankly on your eyelids. So just be aware, you know, around the six month mark, how they're looking, how they're feeling, okay? But if they're doing good, I'm gonna keep using these, okay? We have seven shades in all. This is what the component looks like. I'm so happy she went with the hieroglyph logo on the cap. And I think fairly modest in packaging, but solid overall. You know, I don't know how elaborate you can go with a liquid eyeshadow component, but I do enjoy it. And my apologies for the nails. I didn't get a chance to paint them before these arrived. Please forgive me. For the most part, I think the design is practical as when you open it, you have your doe foot applicator that has an hourglass shape to it and a lot of product appears. Look how much you get just from one swipe and the actual cap has a snap. So you ensure that the component is completely closed so you can prevent any unnecessary drying out of the product. That was smoldering seduction already. I'm getting excited. I didn't get that. Siri, I'm not talking to you. Let's go through all of these. First, we have Divine Champagne, which I wasn't going to get, but I thought maybe this could be a, a lid moment, just very fast black coffee on the lash line. Luna Rose. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a great one and done moment on the lid. Bronze Bijou, which leans a little more gold but it has like a neutral tint to it. Oh, platinum bronze. I was not ready. I swatched this when it came out the box, my goodness. It's the perfect tone for all over and you know we're gonna use Sonia's Fusion Eye Series set with these, okay? Smoldering Seduction. Ooh, the hardiness of that shade is outrageous. These feel really nice on the skin. They glide on smoothly. You know, and I have this on standby just to see how it dries down. I am going to the gym later, and that's why I'm kind of trying to be efficient when I film this so we could uh, get our leg day started, but also see how these wear over, well, if I get there, if I put these on now, it's around one o'clock. If I take this off around six, it's only five hours. I'll report back. Twilight Platinum, silvery. I almost wasn't going to get this shade, but I'm like, this could be something like under sterling silver. You know what I mean? A lot of cocktail moments came to mind and I just said, get the bundle. Just get the bundle. Cosmic Chartreuse. I was afraid if this wouldn't translate green, but it does, right? Because on the photos, it looked very gold, I think because of the lighting, but you could actually detect that green, which Oh, I'm so happy I bought because you know what I'm thinking. This with Wicked Envy from Midnight Sun or even there was another. Oh, from the Star Wars collab, the Sith Seduction palette. So many, 
so many combinations. So here are all the swatches. Crazy about this color selection. Really like what Pat chose to have in her first liquid eye shadow release. Who knows if she will add more. And allow me to double check. I don't think, no, these are not limited. So it is a possibility that we could see more shades added to this lineup. With all details and swatches out the way, I think it's time for you to come in a little closer. <laughs> That's enough. If you're wondering, I have Paradise Venus on the upper parts and Nude Venus 2 from the Holiday Collection on the cheeks. Also applied, I think it's Structure. I keep getting confused between su Supernatural and Structure. Supernatural on the liner. And of course we got Negligee on the lid. Not applying primer on the lid since these are, as they were described to be long wear. So I feel they might have that priming capability. So we'll go in with Divine Champagne first. Actually, I'm gonna go in with Divine Champagne on the back of my hand because I would typically, oh God, I would typically use this as an inner corner highlight. Oh wow, that has really nice sparkle. The swatch did not do it justice. When you start to blend this on the skin, it has more of a scatter pearl effect. Okay, in fact, let me take my finger. So you can see the consistency here, and also you can play with the consistency. So I'm very excited about Divine Champagne because you don't have to have the full blown color placed on the lid. You can apply a little bit so it has more of like a veil-like effect, which I love because I don't, let me show you. Wasn't crazy about the notion of having this color on the lid, but you can dial the intensity. And I'm applying with my finger because I want, again, more of like a, a blown out effect with this shade. That's pretty. But you see how it looks more white in the base? if I apply it directly on my lid. So with Divine Champagne, I think I actually might apply it in this method. A little bit on the back of my hand first, and then tap it on the lid just to get more of a veil-like effect from the shadow. But the actual shine is very pretty. And just so you can see, I would then apply Black Coffee on the lid, or on the, or on the lash line, I should say, and this will be a great, just quick everyday moment. Look how small my black coffee is, my gosh. Oh, and if it's your first time uh, clicking on my video, hi, I love Pat McGrath. I do receive PR sometimes. I haven't received PR in the last few releases, so I bought this myself. I am a fan, for sure. I had the pleasure of meeting Pat McGrath last was it last month? No, it was, it was December with her Star Wars release. So that was an exciting moment. But then of course, when it came out that her uh, Star Wars collab was stickified, <laughs> I don't think social media liked that very much. So who knows if I'll receive any PR from the brand going forward. That's pretty simple, but great shine. And I have a feeling also that this is gonna have really nice staying power because already this has set. So the particles move, absolutely. But we'll see, well, I'm not gonna have this on because I wanna try the other colors, but I really love what that's doing. Okay, Luna Rose. Luna Rose, I do want to apply directly on the lid as this color here. So this is the consistency, right? You definitely have to blend it out, but I'll use my finger again because with shades like these, I feel they're a little more forgiving when you use the finger. You don't have to be as precise as I would like to with the bronzier shades here. Oh, that's pretty. That's shiny, my goodness. I'm gonna have my Fusion Blender on standby. I do love to put a little bit on the back of my hand for application control, however. You could go directly on the lid I understand. In this way, I feel I have better control of the placement. In terms of the blend, pretty nice. I do think it blends 
easily smooth, but you do have to work quickly. So if you wait too long, it'll be very hard to move across the lid. I mean, not exceptionally hard, but you can see it grab the skin once it sets, right? It is a long wear product, so just keep that in mind. Now, this is Luna Rose, Luna Rose all by itself. What do we think? I think that's beautiful. I'm skipping around here because I do want to see, you know what, no, 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 no. Let me stick to this first. I'm gonna stick to this first. We got Divine Champagne on this eye, the black coffee, and we have Luna Rose here on this eye. Forgive me for not applying lids for each look um, because that will take me forever. And again, is leg day. So I'm gonna take this off and apply the next two shades. Luna Rose is a great by itself shade, more so I think how I would wear Divine Champagne, simply because of the lighter rose gold base, so it doesn't look as stark by itself as Divine Champagne does. All right, as usual, we'll apply the concealer again. We're gonna do this a couple of times throughout this video but don't need to apply primer, so that is helpful. I'll probably have sparklies left over. Oh gosh, look at the blush. <laughs> you know, so there are no uh, borders. Okay, that's a little better. Bronze Bijou, mm! uh, directly on the lid, 100%. So this is the more gold-leaning bronze shade. I really like the consistency of the shadow when you place it on the lid. It feels nice. Oh, and there's no fragrance, hallelujah. Pulling it down, being a little more conservative here since this color is packing a little more, but ooh, that's pretty. And I have to remember since I'm using an oil-based makeup remover that I really should wipe any residue because that will affect how the long wear shadow lays on the skin. So just keep that in mind. If it looks a little shiny, shiny, it's because of that. But what I love too is that the doe foot applicator allows for you to place shadow on your lower lash line as well. So that kind of makes it easier to hit the eye all around. And I'm using my refer brush here just to bring that along. And I'm using my finger to tap a little more here around the lid. Bronze Bijou is pretty, looking real golden. And I could imagine also, like let's say I had my uh, Golden Opulence palette on standby. Let's see how these work with powders. If I wanted to hypothetically, which we're doing now, wanted to lay down the long wear first, and then I'll take a matte shade, how do these play with the mattes? Not too bad. I'm sure, of course, if you wait a little bit for it to set, so you can whisk the brush across the texture, you know, nothing bad is gonna happen. That's pretty, I like that. The shine is outrageous. Whoa, that, whoa. And why not, since we're here, gonna take, oh, excuse me, a little bit of Divine Champagne and then place that on the inner corner, or Luna Rose, either one will do. Yes? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm waiting for this one, Platinum Bronze. This is gonna be, this is gonna be it. Make sure if you're going between these fam that you wipe your brush between applications because again, this is a long wear product, so you don't want it to set on your actual bristles. You want to ensure that you wipe that off before that happens. Oh, I got it on my lashes. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, this is, we're doing okay, we're doing good. Ooh, this color, it's rich. I'm gonna tap first to control the application. A little goes a long way. 100%. So you don't have to use a ton of product, but to ensure that you can see the color on the screen, I'm, I was being a little heavy handed on purpose. And the base color is lovely where you can whip it through your crease and it creates that lovely gradient all on its own. It feels lightweight. It doesn't feel overwhelmingly tacky. It doesn't grip my lids like you know with some long wear uh, textures you feel it on your lids and perhaps that might change depending on how much you apply right so perhaps if you do apply a lot 
which you don't have to. In fact, I think it won't be advantageous for you to do so because it could look or wrap around any lit texture. So be aware that you don't need a ton. And if you want to apply more, you can do so lightly with your finger on the lid. Oh, platinum bronze is my favorite so far. I knew it. I knew it. This is such a beautiful color. Bronzy topiness. You can't go wrong. Like, this is fantastic even just for day. It's not so smoky where it warrants, you know, falsies or a dramatic lip. It's just phenomenal. And because I love that wraparound, I am placing some on the lower lash line, but I took way too much. Look how much... Oh my goodness, okay, lesson learned. You don't need a ton for the lash line or under your lash line. You just need a little bit, just a little bit because it could look too like sharp. So let me take my detail here and just kind of whip it down so it has more of like a blurred effect. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Luna Rose, gotta do Luna Rose on the inner corner. I think that will pair. Well, actually, Bronze Bijou will pair nicely with Platinum Bronze, but I think the Rose Gold will be lovely with Platinum. Oh yes, I'm in love. If, for now, if you were to buy just one shade, Platinum Bronze all the way. I know I'm speaking too soon, as we have, let me see here, a three more to go through, but right now, is absolutely perfect. If you pair this with Mink or even Lazarus, you know what? Lazarus would look really nice with Bronze Bijou. A lot of colors. I'm just going through my head right now. So sorry. All right, let's take this off and try the next two. You definitely don't need a lot of product. I applied way too much Platinum Bronze. It's like, it's funny. These last only six months, but you don't need a lot. So <laughs> technically they should last you longer, but making sure I tap off the excess of that oil-based remover, because again, we don't want it to impact how the long wear wears. Ha. Smoldering seduction. I have a feeling my heart will be stolen <laughs> by this one. So let me start off very conservative. Wipe my brush. And then from here, I'll whip it out. Because as we saw from Platinum Bronze, you know, it could get smoky very fast. And already, already, I'm in love. Ooh, this is like a mahogany rich type of bronze. It's, it's brown, but it has like, it's like a reddish brown, but the hue, is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I like to tap and sweep when it comes to these types of textures, jumping from both techniques. I think it's a good uh, balance in terms of how to manipulate the product. Oh my goodness. Smoldering on the back of my hand with my detail so I don't overwhelm the lash line like I did on this eye, yeah. So I have a little more control. Oh, that's pretty. We love a smoky bronze, 100%. But this is definitely more warm leaning than platinum. Mm. This is like Lazarus, 100% is like Lazarus, except this is naturally will have more shine because it's a wet product. Ooh, but if you were to put this on top, but I do detect a little more because of the pearl in here, you have more of like that copper shift with the mahogany backdrop is absolutely gorgeous. And now we gotta go in with the silver shade, Twilight Platinum, my goodness, it's gonna be a party. I think this will definitely lean more heavy evening because of the cooler gunmetal like silvery tone to it. Again, tapping first to get the majority of the product around the lid. And then I'll take it for a ride through the crease. Consistency wise throughout the different shades. Well, let me finish this one first. I have to say though, you know, pretty good across all seven. Well, I didn't do the Cosmic Chartreuse one yet. From what I've worked with, 
you know, not bad. Definitely silvery. I feel like this eye has become the disco ball eye. Maybe not as versatile as the other shades, which was going, which not my fear, but one of the shades I originally was not going to get just because of the effect I knew it would have on the eyes. And not to say that I don't like that disco ball silver look, but I don't find myself reaching for these shades often like I do with Smoldering Seduction or Platinum Bronze. Not to say though, but that's not bad. Listen, if I just needed a quick party eye, then Twilight Bronze it is because the base is lovely. You see here how it blends out to a really nice soft gradient. It almost has like a cool, cool brown leaning backdrop, which I think it great to just rely on solo if you didn't want to use a matte. You don't have to. Yeah, so that's how it looks. And again, beautiful. If I wanted to just slap on some lashes, but you know, this is, this is my jam, just so you know. I know I'm giving Twilight Bronze a hard time, but it's pretty. And I also kind of want to see with Divine Champagne, place some on the back of my hand, I'm whipping it, and now topping. So it's gonna give it a little more punch for sure. So this is what I would rely on Divine Champagne for. Again, just an extra bit of dimension on the center of the lid without actually having to put the wand on your lid, right? I think that would overwhelm the texture here and it will look too crinkly. If you apply it on the back of your hand first and then dry it out a bit, then you could have more of that, that veil reflective effect that I think would pair nicely with any of the shades here in the collection. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. What I really adore about these shadows it's just the one and done nature of them you know what i mean but see the advantage to using the chroma lux pot is that you could just dip your brush into the pot so there is i feel a slightly lower bar of entry when it comes to application and technique between the chroma lux pots and the long wear uh, liquid eyeshadows not to say that these are tougher but i do think there has to be just some care taken when you apply these on your lid to make sure you don't go crazy because you certainly can, right? The consistency is smooth, so it will travel quickly, which means if you wanna keep the color in and under your crease and you apply too much, then you will lose control of the blend and it will travel up too high and I don't think you'd be very happy with that. But let me know what you've experimented with. Yeah, fingers, brush, what type of brush, you know, tapity tap, swirl, swirl, swirl. Last round. Well, we only have one shade left since it's seven and we've already done six. So time to get Cosmic Chartreuse on Mars. And maybe should I get Sith Seduction, just in case. Make sure these are dry. I don't want any residue. So let's start out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Or you know what? This will look fantastic with uh, the Suku Quad. 122, that could be something because this is much more green, right? And then that Chartreuse overlay color in the quad on top, who is shiny. We're so shiny already. Again, I don't mind going in twice and having better control of the blend because I don't want it to run away from me and make sure it stays in the crease. Yeah, so, ooh, that's pretty. Very spring-like. So lovely. All right, I usually don't like to do this, but I'm just gonna whip it lightly yeah, I still have like smoldering seduction still hanging out in my lashes, it's fine. I'm gonna whip that across. And since we have one more eye to do, I thought let's see what would happen if we combined a few of these, yeah? So because of the lighter green shade, there is a little bit of a smoky effect for sure, but I don't think it's as prominent as you see from Platinum Bronze, Twilight Bronze, or even Smoldering Seduction, right? So if you wanted a little more smokiness, you could go in with, I think it's, what is it called? Let me just go get it. Galactic Conquest. If we were to place, hold on, just 
cut take a look at cosmic chartreuse all by itself do we love it's so shiny yes 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 if i want to tap a little bit of this let me get my fusion worker because that's gonna help it stick a lot better Ooh, so it's darker which means you can place this on the outer part of the lid and the adherence i feel will be great for this texture or if you want it you could go in with wicked envy from midnight sun i think that'll be a great pairing as well and don't mind me since i already committed to this we're going to try to clean this up work that blend oh ooh, 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 ooh. let me apply a little concealer here because it got a little messy fine and then i'm just going to slowly carve underneath and then continue whipping this out okay all right that's that's something now hypothetically if we wanted to combine several things let me see i gotta work fast so i would like to do luna rose Ooh, i could do platinum bronze with luna rose i think that'd be really pretty i'm gonna start with luna rose on the inner part of the lid and then I'm gonna whip that out first, carve it under the lid, and then platinum bronze on the outer part of the lid. Tap that here, and then tap that in and under the crease. And taking some on the back of my hand to use it as a palette to start building the smoke here on the outer part. So I have a little more control not overwhelming luna rose and if i do i could just go in with more that's not a problem Ooh, that's pretty i like i know doing back of the hand stuff is very makeup artist and you feel you might be wasting product but you know just don't put a ton on the back of your hand right a little goes a long way you could just work with it slowly kind of build to the intensity you want Ooh, that's pretty. And Luna Rose is still shining brightly, okay? She has not left. Why not? We can do another shade. We could go in with Smoldering Seduction now on the lower lash line just to kind of mix it up. Going in with my detail brush because I want this to appear super smoky here on the bottom. Tie it in with what's happening on the lid. And why not? I'll go in with Divine Champagne now. Or I could actually go in with another on the inner lower lash line. But I think Divine Champagne just has beautiful sparkle that to place it here as well as the inner corner, I think great. Because you have really nice brightness. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. And I like what's going on here. Although I got to clean this up a little bit. Because of all the sparklies, sometimes if you overblend, the color stays behind and the sparkles just go on their own. But this, what a great combination. It's almost like, well, almost like I used eyeshadow, but it's, I think, a little too shiny for it to appear just as a powder. So I think that's the primary difference. Just the pearl and sparkle factor in these is outrageous. But Cosmic Chartreuse is crazy. Okay, if I were to pick my top three, like don't buy all of them, okay? If I were to recommend, it would be these three. Platinum Bronze, Cosmic Chartreuse, and Smoldering Seduction. These are my favorite out of the seven. Not to say the other one sucked, just in terms of the the blend, the color, the, the vibe, okay? I feel they have a little more like something to give. I would argue Divine Champagne, I think, is a versatile shade that you could not only use for just single lid purposes, but also to create that reflective effect. Again, just to show you quickly here, as I like to do, I can now tap it on both sides, just so you can see the brightening factor 
that happens when you create that overlay effect. Luna Rose is pretty, absolutely. Something I feel like I would have to combine with another shadow, but not really. I don't mind just pairing this with black coffee if I wanted, again, just a one lid moment with shine and a little more color than what Divine Champagne gives me on its own. Bronze Bijou is lovely. It just looks more like a gold on me, right? And Usually I like to pair colors like that with another shade just to add a little more intensity and smoke, but you can't wear this on its own. An all gold bronze eye, yes, nothing to sneer at, but not one of my go-to one and done eye look moments. So that's why going into platinum bronze. Platinum bronze, I think, you know, just the tone is cool, but it's not too smoky for every day, but the intensity you can build, and I think the color itself is just wonderful to be placed on lid, crease, and lower lash line, just to create that soft, smoky haze that has just beautiful life to the eyes, but again, great for every day, but also great for evening if you wanted. Smoldering Seduction, I mean, this is one of my most favorite shades just out of all brands I've encountered. A mahogany brown with copper reflect in the pearl. It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, the consistency is great where you blend it out. The fade just looks so natural and light on the eyes. And Cosmic Chartreuse. I was pleasantly surprised because I thought it was going to lean more gold than green. And I'm so happy that you can actually detect more green in the shade and please if you pair it like I did with Galactic Conquest or if you wanted to go in with Wicked Envy or or Citrine from Celestial Odyssey <laughs> this okay oh yes oh <laughs> yes what a pairing okay Fantastic. In fact, I feel there's a platinum, let me see here. There's like a platinum bronze moment in here. This is a little more brown, yes. This is a Luna Rose moment, 100%. This is a little more cool leaning. What is this? Bronze Nova. Bronze Nova. I forgot about Bronze Nova. That's kind of like Luna Rose vibes. I could apply that on top of Luna Rose. My apologies for this tangent. I just thought about Citrus Envy and had to. Also, this shade here, Palladium. Palladium, I think, will go lovely with Twilight Bronze. This is a little more taupey where Twilight Bronze, I think, leans more silver overall. So I have to play with it a little bit. But I do want to apply Falcon Noir with Twilight bronze like those two will be so pretty you know what i mean so why don't we talk about it these have a lot more shine than the chromalux the chromalux for me i just love that satin finish you know what i mean and also just the ease of use very smooth you could just go from pot to brush extra galactic gold reminds me of bronze bijou they're very similar. Rouge Rebellion definitely has more red. I don't think it's gonna match up with Smoldering Seduction. You know what I mean? So Smoldering Seduction is here. You see that has like more mahogany brown vibes to it. And of course we have Smuggler Spice, which is like Rose Venus in terms of the flip. A Luna Rose moment maybe, but not quite. Yeah, I think it's a totally different shade altogether. So you see here, and Luna Rose is here. I mean, you could pair these together. That'll be a pretty combination. I do want to quickly do something. Stand by. I do want to take Falcon Noir. Okay, I'm going to place that all over the lid. I adore this gun metal shade. It just serves as the perfect setup for all things smoky. And probably Falcon Noir on an on a off note is the not as the shiniest as the other chroma luxes but i appreciate that because when it's shiny and dark like this i do feel it creates like that just mood and just like with the uh, long wears chroma lux packs a punch put in too much and now with twilight platinum hmm. on the center i know i'm gonna use my finger to tap get a little more silvery here. Oh, that's pretty. See what I'm saying? 
So you have more of that that smokiness from Falcon Noir, but then you got the shine and that reflectivity from Platinum Bronze. If you wanted a little more shine on the center of the lid, you know what I mean? And of course, the Vine Champagne here on the inner. Yes. Oh, that's pretty. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we got smoky. We did. I just had to see this combination. Do I have something on my face? Oh, I just put the smoldering seduction on my face. <laughs> Let's wipe that off. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't need that. Great. And now I wiped off my blush. You see that nice little patch there, everybody? Apply a little more Nude Venus 2, just so we could uh, rectify that little mistake. I could apply lashes, but I'm just gonna do uh, a little bit of mascara just to pull everything together. Oh, oh my goodness. I kind of want to make this a thumbnail, but I also don't want it to be misleading because they're like, that's not a color in the <laughs> longwear lineup, but you'll see it in the timestamps, okay? So here is our final look, just using a few of the longwear eyeshadows. This looks amazing, amazing. I'm very happy with the product, with the performance. Again, I will check back in in regards to how long it wears. You know, I guess I could go into the gym like this. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> really love how we combined Twilight Bronze and Falcon Noir. I know Falcon Noir wasn't in this release, but ultimately I want to share the message where anytime you buy new makeup or anytime I buy new makeup, Part of the excitement is matching it up with old makeup that I already have. Like, I don't want to treat things separately. I like to combine, play, experiment, and I encourage you to do the same. And 100%, this is a first impressions. Again, they just arrived today. I dipped in on camera. I think I can say with confidence that this is a successful formula in terms of the blendability, the colors, the texture, Everything I found in, or my expectations for a successful liquid eyeshadow, I think have been met with Pat's new longwear eyeshadow formula. Unfortunately, I do not have Lisa Eldridge's uh, liquid, the Lurex, what are those called? So let us know down below if you have those liquid eyeshadows and you also bought a few of the Pat ones, what are those comparisons? Lisa does have more of an extensive range. She did release them earlier than these so who knows if pat will release more i would love to see maybe like violets like something like blitz violet orchid in a liquid form or even something more magenta let's see even something like falcon noir in that shine capacity my goodness a blue we, we all love the blue whether it's like blitz emerald or blitz blue from subliminal those would be fantastic right so who knows what we will see from the longwear line in the future, but I am very happy with the colors. Although I have my top three, happy that I have all of them. I will continue to use all of them. And I think primarily for me, the role these will play is just the one and done moment in terms of having that fast blend that you can use your fingers or a brush with. And keep in mind, since these are liquid, make sure you use a brush bristle synthetic or an undyed bristle or Kalinsky, something that is compatible with liquid eyeshadows. I wouldn't use dyed goat hair, red squirrel, or any of those bristle types, gray squirrel, they will be ruined. So make sure you have the appropriate tools for the application. But for me, just to have an eyeshadow product that I can slap on quickly, that will still bring on the shine, the reflectivity, just a really nice moment on the eyes for me that's simple to achieve. Whether you just wanna slap on mascara or you wanna go in with liner first, you could also pair these with your powder eyeshadows from Pat McGrath or another brand. So I think they can find themselves comfortably in your collection and especially with the cocktail that's boundless, I think you're gonna have a ball. So let me know down below, fam, what did you buy if you bought anything from the Love Collection? And I have my eye on the palettes, but again, I'm gonna wait until they go on sale if they do. Even if they do, I shouldn't buy them anyway because I'm trying to be better. But anyway, just wanted to put that out there. I'll see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial 
Pat McGrath Extravaganza, or Mathlife Faves. Take care, and I will see you again soon.